Jimmy Butler's name has been thrown around a lot in recent trade rumors, but at age 35, how good is Butler right now? Does he still have the juice in his game for another legendary playoff run, or are Jimmy's best days behind him? In this video, we're going to do a deep dive on the stats and film from last year to see exactly where Jimmy's game is at. Now, Jimmy overall has an old school 90s style of play, where he loves to simply put the ball in his right hand, lower his inside shoulder, and bump his way to the basket. Overall, Butler doesn't have elite quickness or explosiveness off the floor, but he does have good stability as a driver, where he's very comfortable initiating contact and carving out these attacking angles. And again, there's not a whole lot of flash to Jimmy's game. If he gets the defense to open up their stance, he's going to barrel through that contact and elevate towards the rim. You'll see him here get this shot fake and rip through to his right. And notice how Jimmy is going to both pick up, and initiate contact back into his man, which slightly bounces him back and gives Butler plenty of airspace to rise up. When finishing around the basket, Jimmy also loves getting to these two foot layups, and this allows him to more effectively drive up and through contact. You'll see the defense here initially slide and cut off his drive, but Jimmy from here still has no problem picking up and exploding through that contact. A bucket. Yes! I'm sure you've also noticed that Butler really favors using his right hand to finish, even if he's elevating from the left side. But because he's so effective at getting the defense off balance by initiating contact, he's still able to pretty effectively find these scoring windows. We'll see him here get to this hard rip to his left, and watch how he's going to lower his shoulder and move this big all the way across the paint. Now Jimmy's strength and stability also makes him an effective one foot finisher, where he has no problem picking up and stepping through contact into layups. One of his go-to moves is his bump Euro, where Jimmy initiates contact on his pickup, then uses his next two steps to stride out into a finish. We'll see him here gather off his left foot, then initiate contact. And from here, he can use his next two steps to decelerate and find a finishing window. And while Jimmy at age 35 may not have the best verticality, he still has enough juice to pick up and explode through gaps. Jimmy on this play is going to turn the corner off the screen to his right, and notice how this help defender is going to slide across the nail to close off his driving line. But Jimmy still has no problem picking up and using these long strides to step right past him. So in essence, this is Butler's bread and butter. Using these simple straight line attacks to get the defense to open up, then initiate contact to create space to score. But I also think Butler has some underrated depth to his score, and the first thing we can look at is his pivot game. When bumping his way to the basket, Jimmy has a variety of spin moves and step throughs he likes to get to. One of his go-tos is his basic spin over his right shoulder, where he initially attacks hard to his left, creating space to turn back over to his strong right hand. And Jimmy can set this up in a multitude of ways, by either initiating it from a post up, or off a live dribble from the perimeter. Seven points per game in his eight games. He's out on a spring day. I like how he mixes up the timing here, where Butler dribbles, then throws an aggressive shoulder bump. And when he feels the defense heavily leaning into that contact, Jimmy's going to take a dribble and flow into a spin. This is a nice variation off that same move, where this time Jimmy has a clear mismatch. So instead of turning his back into a spin, Butler is going to initiate contact and get to the step through. And Jimmy's pivot game also carries over to his scoring on the perimeter, where he's got the first step to create clean blowbys, while also having some shake to his game. I love this move here, where Jimmy is going to hit a nice rocker step by transferring his weight to his left foot, then moving the ball across his waist to sell this move, which gets this defender out of his frame, giving Butler a clear driving line to his right. Now off the dribble, I wouldn't say Butler overall has a shifty or dynamic handle. Pretty much all his moves come back to his physicality and driving through contact. But this change of pace push cross is one dribble move he likes to get to, where he casually lifts up his level and turns his hips, to then push the ball across his frame and dart into this drive. With a burst, a basket, and a foul! Now outside of playing downhill and putting pressure on the rim, Butler does pretty much the rest of his on-ball scoring in the mid-range, and his process to creating these looks is very similar to his scoring around the basket, where again he gets the defense to open up with these tight attacking angles, to then create space by initiating contact. Notice on this play how Butler's going to explode to his right, and drive into the defense's body, pushing their momentum back, and giving him the space to rise up. 
When playing with his back to the basket, Jimmy also has the ability to turn and shoot over both his shoulders. And when getting to these looks, Butler has great elevation on his jumper by both having a high release point and getting good lift off the floor. And this allows him to get these shots off without creating much separation. Notice how the defense on this play is crowding Jimmy's space, but he still has no issue turning towards the baseline and sinking this routine jumper. Now overall, I wouldn't say Jimmy is the most advanced mid-range shot creator, but he does have some good counters layered into his game. For example, if the defense overplays the spin into his jumper, Butler can reverse pivot out into his pull-up. You'll see PJ Washington here play picture perfect defense by first sinking back and keeping his hips in front of the ball, but Butler's going to again create space by faking the spin and turning into his jumper. And then if Jimmy has a slower footed big out guarding him in open space, his favorite move is just this basic step back, which he can comfortably hit going both right and left. Butler fires a long two. So all in all, this is how Jimmy does pretty much all his on-ball scoring. He's got the physicality to bowl his way to the basket, while also having some sneaky footwork and pivot moves in his back. Plus, he's also a reliable shot creator in the mid-range. And while Jimmy overall has never been a top tier slasher or in between score, he still has enough in his game to generate these looks if need be. When playing off the ball, Jimmy also brings a ton of value as a cutter, where the Heat love to have him work off a variety of off ball screening actions. One of Miami's go to plays is having Jimmy initiate the offense, then blast off his back screen. And obviously, once Butler gets two feet in the paint, he's going to be really hard to deal with. We can see them run a similar play here, where Jimmy's again initiating the offense, and as soon as he gives it up, he's gonna blast off his back screen. Fours and back -to -back titles. Jimmy Butler. The Heat also like to use Butler as a screen, where he commonly slips out and gets easy layups. This is a sneaky bucket right here, where Jimmy's gonna flip the screen towards the middle, which pulls his man up towards the three, but that then gives Jimmy all this open space to cut into, and get this lob at the rim. And then obviously, if Butler catches the ball with some momentum going downhill, he's easily got the strength and skill to overwhelm the backline defense. Now Butler's scoring also extends out beyond the three, and last year he shot a career high 41% from behind the line. And while pretty much all of Jimmy's outside looks are just your standard cornered catch and shoot threes, this still provides some good floor spacing off the ball, while also allowing Jimmy to punish the defense for giving him too much space. But this leads us to Butler's biggest hole as an offensive player, and that's his inability to shoot threes off the dribble. Last year, Butler attempted 0.7 pull-up threes per game, and his accuracy was pretty low compared to his looks off the catch. And the thing is, Butler not being a real pull-up shooting threat from range puts a cap on his on-ball creation, because with the ball, he doesn't really have the ability to stretch out defensive coverages, which forces him to do a majority of his work isolating in the mid-post, cutting off the ball, or spotting up in the corner, which all for sure leads to efficient offense. But with the ball in his hands, it's tough to depend on Jimmy as a primary engine of the offense. Now Jimmy also has a massive impact on the defensive end, where off the ball, he's still one of the most disruptive defenders across the league, having great anticipation and speed when defending on the weak side of the floor. Now defensively, the Heat love to step up and play aggressive in gap. And when Butler's on the weak side of the floor, he plays a free safety role by covering players one or two passes away. And when defending from these spots, Jimmy's defensive IQ is off the charts, where he's elite at reading the ball handler and taking away passing reads. You'll see him here feel Paulo Bencaro ignoring his man in the corner and hone in on this lob pass at the rim. So Butler's going to simply rotate down to break it up. But now on this play, Jimmy first slides down to take away the pass of the roller to then shoot back out and snag the skip pass. And that ability to read the offense also makes Jimmy a really problematic defender in gap, where he puts himself in position to both stop the downhill drive and make plays on the ball. If the ball handler turns his back and loses track of Jimmy for a split second, he's going to pounce on the ball like a cat 
Nice little second chance point. And at age 35, Jimmy is still a very reliable wing defender, where he's got the foot speed to slide and stick with the NBA's best perimeter scores, plus the strength to switch up and hold his own against fours and fives. This versatility has played a major role in Miami's defense over the years, and this is one of the biggest factors that makes Butler so effective in the playoffs. Because the thing is, no matter what lineup the Heat or the opposing team wants to go with, Jimmy can fit and match up in any structure, and this obviously makes him perfectly built for playoff basketball. So while Butler may have some limitations to his on-ball creation, he can still provide steady offense with his slashing, off-ball cutting, and mid-range score. Plus, he's also turning into a pretty reliable spot-up shooter. And then defensively, I still think Jimmy is one of the best all-around defenders in the league. His intensity may not always be completely maxed out in the regular season, but he can still turn it up to an elite level if need be. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments what you think of Jimmy Butler's game. The kids here.